How to use all four CRUD operations for the Firebase Cloud Database. Firebase Setup. To set up Firebase for your Flutter project, go to consolefirebasegoogle.com and then click on Add Project. Give it any project name that you like and click on Continue. Next, scroll a bit down, disable Google Analytics and click on Create Project. After some loading time, click on Continue. Now we need to link this Firebase project to our Flutter project, therefore click on this Android symbol. First we need to get the Android package name, therefore go to your Android app, build Gradle file. Scroll a bit down until you see this application ID that you need to copy. Back in your browser, paste it inside and click on register app. Next, download the Google Services JSON file. This file holds all the information to link your Firebase project to your Flutter project. Therefore, you need to drag this file inside of your Android app folder. In your browser, scroll again down and click on Next. Finally, we need to add some configurations to the Build Gradle file. Therefore, copy this Google Services class path. Then go to the Build Gradle file inside the Android folder. Inside this file, you go to Build Script Dependencies. And after this last dependencies, you add this class path inside. Back in your browser, scroll a bit down and copy the line apply Google services. Now you need to go to the Android app folder and here you have another build Gradle file. Scroll all the way down until you come to the end of the file and paste this line apply Google services inside. Also go a bit up until you come to this default config and here you set the min SDK version to 21. In your browser, you can scroll all the way down, click on next and click on continue to the console to complete this setup step. And lastly, to use Firebase, you go to your pubspec YAML file in your Flutter project. In my case, I add the Firebase database Cloud Firestore to my pubspec YAML file, save this file and get the dependencies. And finally, to set up Firebase for your Flutter project, go to the main method and here you change these three lines. Make sure to import the Firebase core library to initialize your Firebase app. Also make sure to stop your Flutter app and run it again. If Firebase was configured correctly, it will load your Flutter app. Otherwise, in case your Flutter app crashes, then you have missed some of the configuration steps showed in this video. Create data. Let's write data from a Flutter app to the Firestore Cloud database. To get started, we go to consolefirebasegoogle.com where you need to create a Firebase project and I have shown you in the last video exactly all the steps how to create this project. And now we go to Firestore database. Then you click on create database. Make sure to select start in test mode and click on next. Next, you can choose the server location of your Firebase server. I will simply go with the default settings and click on enable. After some loading time, you can create a new collection, I call it Users, and click on Next. And inside this collection, you can create documents, and I create a document with a field name, and the value I give it, for example, Emma as a name, and click on Save. As a result, we have a new document with a document ID, and inside this document, we store one key value pair. In this case, we store the value Emma. The next document we want to create through our Flutter app. Therefore, in your pubspec YAML file under your dependencies, add the Cloud Firestore package. Next, within the Flutter app, we create an app bar with a text field and an icon button. And now if we type anything inside of our text field, then we want to send it to Firebase if we click on this button. Therefore, let's add a text editing controller to our text field so that we can access the value of our text field, in this case, the name Emma. And lastly, we create a new method create user where we put the name inside. And inside this method, we want to write our username to the Firebase collection users. And therefore, we create a new document with some custom ID. And now we can use this document reference to write our data inside. Therefore, I create a new map. And inside of this map, we can add key value pairs. So in this case, I put the name inside that we have typed in our text field. And you can also add some more data inside. Next, we can use the doc user reference to create this document and also put this JSON data inside. Let's try it out and write a name to our text field and click on this button. 
And with this, it creates a new document with the document ID, my ID. And inside this document, we put all the user data inside. So basically one document represents one single user and we can put multiple documents inside of one collection. In case you work with model objects in your Flutter project, then we can also replace this JSON map by a user object. And here I also put an ID inside. So this is the document ID. Right now it is my ID. However, you can also remove this my ID, then he will generate an ID automatically for you. And we can access the generated ID from our document. Next, to convert this user object to some JSON data, therefore we need to create this to JSON method inside of our model object. And inside of it, we create then a map with all the keys and also value pairs for each of our fields that we have inside of our model object. Let's also try it out and let's write the model object to Firebase. And you see he has created a new document with our user. And here is our name inside, the birthday, age, and also we have put the ID inside, which is the document ID from our document. Optionally, you can create a user page and within the scaffold body property, you can create then multiple text fields. And below the text fields, you can create an elevated button. Next, we add some text editing controllers in our state and each of these text editing controller we want to attach then to all of our text fields. And lastly, if we click on this button, then we want to write our user data to the Firebase database. Therefore, let's go to the elevated button and if we press on it, then we create first of all a new user object and we access over all of our controllers and the values of our text fields. And then we only need to write this user data to our Firebase server. Therefore, we use the create user method, put our user object inside. And finally, we put then this user object to some JSON data and put it inside of our document user inside of our users collection. And with this, we have a great form UI and we can send this data easily to our Firebase server. And this will be then stored inside of our Firebase database read data how to read data from the cloud firestore database in the last video we have written some data in this case some user data to firebase and this was then stored inside of some documents that we want to read right now therefore we have created a collection users that we can read or we can also read individual documents so in this case my id is the document id that we also want to read individually Let's get started by creating a new method readUsers and inside of it we want to reference the Firebase collection users that we have created in the last video. On this Firebase collection you call the method snapshots to get all the documents from this Firebase collection and it returns a query snapshot of map string dynamic so we get some JSON data back and we want to convert this JSON data to some user objects. Therefore, we go over all of the snapshot documents and for each of the documents, we want to convert it back to our user object. So first of all, you can access the data of this document, which is then this map string dynamic. And we want to convert this to our user object. And therefore, we call on our user object, the from JSON method. And I haven't created this yet. So you also need to go to your user object and create a new method from JSON. This returns a user object and we create then based on this JSON that we got from Firebase, a new user object. And lastly, we only need to use this readUsers method and this basically returns a stream of list user objects that we want to show in our UI. Therefore, let's go up to our scaffold and within the body property, we want to create a stream builder and inside of it, we call the readUsers method that we have created before and which returns a stream of list users. And we need to make sure that we put the list users here inside. So basically the data that we have inside of our stream. And now over the snapshot, we can access this data. First of all, we check that we have some data and then we can access all the users. And lastly, we only need to build our users. Therefore, I create a list view and I map over all of the users and each of the users we want to create with the build user method. 
and inside of this mass set we get then one specific user and we display it inside of a list style. So we display first of all the name of the user, the birthday and also here we display the user age from the user. To make everything work, we also need to add next to the successful case of loading some data, also an error case and also the loading case. So in the else case, we display some circular progress indicator in case our data is loading from Firebase. With this, we can try it out by hot restarting the application. And you see, we display four users in our app. These are basically the four documents that we have inside of the Firebase collection users that we have loaded. With the current implementation, we get our users back as a stream. And with this, it is possible to change the data inside of Firebase and all the changes are directly updated in our UI. Otherwise, if you don't want the real-time changes for your data, then you need to change the stream builder to a future builder. And instead of read users, which returns a stream, we get the first snapshot. As a result, this time, if I change the data inside of Firebase and click on update, then this data will not be changed inside of our UI automatically. You have to do it manually instead. Next to loading all the documents from a Firebase collection, we can also load one individual document, in this case the document with my ID. Therefore, to load a single document from Firebase, we create a new method readUser and we put it inside of a future builder and this method that we want to create returns a single user. Next, we create the readUser method and inside of it, we reference the users collection. And inside this user collection, we reference a document that we want to load. And finally, we use the docuser to get a single document or snapshot back. So if you call the get method, then he will get one snapshot. And the snapshot, we check first of all if it exists inside of Firebase. So if the document exists, then we can get the data of the snapshot. So we get the JSON data and we convert it back to a user object. And lastly, inside the future builder, we want to build the user that we have loaded from Firebase. Therefore, we first of all get the user back from Firebase and then we use the build user method to build our user. However, in our case, the user can be nullable because the document cannot exist in Firebase. And therefore, we also want to make sure that if the user doesn't exist, then we display an error message or a message on the screen, no user. And like before, next to the successful case, we can also add the loading indicator in case we load the data from Firebase and also an error case in case something goes wrong. With this, if we hot reload, we display a single user inside the UI. And this is the user that we have loaded over the document ID, my ID. So this is the user Emma. And this is what we have basically defined before inside of the read user method. Here we have referenced this my ID document. Update data, delete data. How to update or delete documents inside the Cloud Firestore database. We have a collection users and a document with the document ID, my ID. And lastly, we have some data that we want to update. In this case, we want to update the field name and we want to update the value James to another value. Therefore, let's reference first of all the users collection and this document that we want to update. And now we can call on this document, the update method. And inside of it, you need to put a JSON map inside and then you put the key value pairs inside that you want to update. With this, if we click on this update button, then the name James is updated to the name Emma that we have specified inside of our update method. If you have nested values in your document, then you can update these values by using the dot notation. First of all, we use the city key and then the name key that we have here in front to update the value London. Let's also try it out. I click on the update button and you see the value Sydney was updated. In case you want to remove a field in your document, then you can use the field value delete as your value. And with this, if I click on the update button, then you see that this field was deleted. And I also can delete, for example, the city. Let's click again on the update button and you see that this field was deleted. So all in all, with the update method, we update specific fields of a document. Whereas if we use the set method, and now we click on this update button, 
then you see that he will simply replace the document with the new data that we have provided inside of the set method. And lastly, we want to delete a document. Therefore, I have created a new button and we reference again from the user collection one document. And then you can call on this document the delete method. Let's also try it out. I click on the delete button and you see that this document was deleted.